Farmers and researchers are always on the lookout for things that could hurt or damage crops. Recently, small black and red bugs that had some characteristics of a stink bug were discovered in the soil of a soybean field. Luckily, Jim Kalish identified them as white-margined burrower bugs, and they are not considered a pest. However, there are some pests out in soybean fields that producers should start scouting for. We were able to meet up with Nebraska Extension Cropping Specialist Justin McMechan to discuss details about this burrower bug, learn about a few soybean pests to scout for, and ended our conversation about the risk of diseases due to hail damage. Gary Lesswing sent us a sample last week, uh, and we were fairly concerned when it came in because it resembles some insects that are major pests in the state. Uh, and this red black bug you describe is the nymphal stage of that, uh, what, we, what we would call the white margin burrowing bug. Uh, so when it's older or in its full adult stage, which it overwinters as, it's black and it has this white margin around it and it looks like a stink bug. And many people are familiar with what stink bugs look like. Uh, and so there was large numbers in a soybean field down in, in the south central part of the state. And so he brought this in and uh, we got it identified. And, and this insect's not a pest. Uh, so what it was is it was feeding on mint and henbit mostly. Uh, and they sprayed out the henbit in the field and it migrated into the soybeans. So it was existing around the soybeans, feeding on above ground vegetation, but it exists so temporally in a soybean field, we don't really don't concern ourselves with applying anything to it. So producers may see it. Uh, my guess is they moved out of most of the soybean fields in the area now, uh, but it's not something that requires any management practices. Okay, so if somebody sees this bug, what should they do? Uh, you know, uh, you can check back on it a couple days later, it's probably not going to be there anymore. So it's just one of those ones that will be crawling around the soil surface. High numbers tend to scare us, but it doesn't mean just because a pest is present or an insect is present, it's, it's a pest in the system. So it looked kind of dangerous, but it's not. It's not, yep. Okay, let's talk about uh, some other pests that may be sure. more of a problem, uh, particularly at this point in time uh, in, the, in the year. Yeah, yeah, so there are some insects that we are seeing in the system or hearing about uh, from consultants in the area. Beanleaf beetles one of them, feeding on soybeans early season. Uh, this insect has to do a lot of defoliation and honestly I wouldn't be concerned about a soybean field unless the population was already low in that soybean field for stand. Um, you know if we're seeing significant amounts of, of bean leaf beetles and what I tell consultants if you're scouting a field for bean leaf beetle uh, you know grab your coffee cup in the morning walk along walk about 10 to 15 feet a row and look down as the sun's shining on the soybeans and often you can see bean leaf beetle through those leaves. Uh, there are counts and recommendations for those. But again, defoliation's gotta be pretty high. Uh, we're moving into the season later. There are a lot of defoliators in soybeans. Uh, and so typically we do a broad uh, kind of evaluation method for those. It's total defoliation. If we're reaching 30% or more, uh, that's when you might wanna pull a trigger. But uh, you know, carry a sweep net. That's a great way of telling what else is in that system, if there's any beneficials out there. Um, and we have great resources available through CropWatch on how to do that scouting method uh, within the field. Account for the whole canopy is the most important part. I hear a lot of growers see Japanese beetle. In the next few weeks, we're gonna see a lot of Japanese beetle. They defoliate at the top of the canopy. So from the road, it looks really bad. But if you evaluate the whole canopy, uh, often those thresholds are below 30% uh, in the vegetative stages. So people just need to be careful. Just need to be careful, scout those fields correctly. You know, it's not, it's often feels cheap to put on an insecticide, but there are repercussions for that insecticide. You can eliminate a lot of natural enemies that upset the system and make a second application and get, get quite costly in the end. All right, let's talk and let's sort of move into hail damage because uh, this time of year is something else that can be very problematic. Uh, we had some rain and probably some hail in the area last night. Yeah, we've had some severe storms move through, as you mentioned, and uh, you know, often people try and correspond uh, insect damage and hail damage. They're very different things. In fact, in hail, uh, in soybeans, we don't even equate for defoliation until we reach R1 stage. Lots of our soybeans haven't reached that yet. Uh, we're interested in stand count, uh, and FCIC has great recommendations on that stand count evaluation. But we're all also interested in node breakage. If we have total number of nodes broken, uh, that gives us an estimation of stand or of potential yield losses. Growers are getting to the point, you know, we're June 11th, uh, we're 12th today. We're getting to the point where we really can't make any uh, replants, and, and it's viable. I think uh, by the 15th, we have to be at a population of 65,000 or lower to to warrant that that replant. Uh, so. It's that situation where we want to know what the, the yield potential is of that so we can adjust our management recommendations later in the season. Uh, so if a grower is doing an evaluation, uh, you know, just count the total number of nodes expected on that plant and cuts. If we're looking at a V1, V2 stage plant, 50% cuts is about a 7% yield loss. Uh, you get up to V2, V3, uh, it gets up to about 14%. So we're not talking huge losses. Uh, soybeans are a very resilient plant as long as it has a viable growing point. And that's the most important thing. 
We get hail, often producers want to rush out to the field and immediately evaluate those plants. Uh, wait the seven to 10 days, determine if those plants are still viable. That's what you want to know as live plants per acre. Uh, and that'll give you an idea of the regrowth and yield potential of that existing crop. Mm -hmm.